Hi, welcome to Splash Learn. My name is Chana and I have been teaching for 27 years. I'm here to tell you all about the assessments you can find right here in Splash Learn. We are all familiar with the term summer learning loss. It happens every year during summer break. No matter how many times teachers will encourage families to continue to work on skills over the summer, the gap is still pretty evident. However, due to the elongated closures this spring, we are now calling it the COVID slide. It is estimated that the learning loss could potentially be up to a half year learning loss. I know I did everything in my power to hopefully keep this gap from happening, but there were so many unforeseen variables standing in our way. As an educator, it's important to discover what these learning gaps are and bridge them before it's too late. This is where assessing your students will come into play. Splash Learn assessments now make the evaluation of those learning gaps so much easier. The results of the assessments will help you create a tailor-made program for every one of your students. So let's unpack this assessment tab right here and take a look around. So here we are inside the assessments tab of a second grade class. As you can see, the assessments are going to help you in so many ways. You're going to be able to gauge the pacing of your math curriculum. You're going to monitor student learning and engagement. Of course, you'll be able to recognize the gaps along the way, and the personalized learning plans will guide you through it all. All you simply have to do is assess your class now. From here, you will see the five standards that your grade level needs to have assessments taken in. To assign them to your class, simply click Assign. By doing this, it will then prompt you to click the OK button because no other assignments can be given till these assessments have been taken. So you will hit OK. The one thing I love about Splash Learn assessments is that the questions are read to the students. This makes it more of a math assessment than a reading assessment, and I really appreciate that. Next, we're going to jump into a second grade classroom that has had some assessments taken so we can look at some of their data reports. Here is a second grade class who has some assessments being done. As soon as children begin those assessments, the reports are generated for you. Let's jump in and see what a report looks like. Let's check out geometry. So here in geometry, we know the pre-assessment has been assigned because we have one blip on our graph. As a class, we can see who's doing well, who's not, and who has yet to take that test. As soon as you see red dots on your graph, this is where you want to jump in and get your personalized learning plan. You would assign it here. If you want to know what it's going to look like before you assign it, jump over to the student report and check it out. I noticed that Marie had a red dot, so I'm going to check out Marie's personalized learning plan and see what she needs to work on in geometry. She has one second grade objective to work on before she can be considered complete. That's awesome. If you want to check out other reports, you can go here. Let's check out addition next. As a class, we're still on the pre-assessment stage. I can see who has not taken it yet. I see lots of green dots and that makes my heart happy. And then I see a stream of red dots. This is alarming. So I want to check out who it is and what I can do to help. And it's our friend Marie again. So let's jump up here and see what's going on with Marie. In Marie's personalized learning plan, I see that she has a second grade objective to work on, but also 11 first grade objectives and five kindergarten objectives. This is so helpful to me as a teacher. Just quick at a glance, I know what grade level gaps she's bringing to the table. I can see here she could do better in this area, so we'll address that in a moment. She's in progress here. She has mastered something here, but I always address the red marks first. She needs attention on fluently adding within 10. In the classroom, this is when I would have pulled a group of students to the back table to work on some intervention, but I don't have that luxury this year. So I will either use Zoom breakout rooms or assign a separate Zoom meeting to just those kids that are needing my assistance. When you are finished with the assessment period, about halfway through the year, you're gonna to wanna to archive this first round of assessments. You're gonna finish the assessment. By doing this, it is going to give you a chance to reassign the assessment to kids in order to take a mid-year assessment and the end of year assessment. You can see here in place value, the teacher has archived several assessments taken already throughout the year, and that's where the kids are working currently. You can see the scope of his year and how it's going along. And the other thing I like about these reports, either class or student, is I can print them out. I like having a quick at a glance look 
right in front of me as I'm working through my curriculum. If you have a student who is still needing more intervention, these reports would come in handy for your interventionalist or math coach at your site. And at the end of the year, school administrators would love to see your whole class report so they can see the arc of progression that you have made through the year. So that is how assessments and reports are going to guide you through the year. And we wish you the best of luck as you embark on this adventure.